Carolyn, and today I'm going to teach you how to make Easter bread. I pull my recipe out of Creative Cooking Encyclopedia, so this is what I follow. I'm just going to put that off to the side for now. So first thing we have to do is get a small bowl and proof our yeast. So I have four and a half teaspoons of yeast, which is two envelopes, a quarter cup of warm milk, and I did microwave that just for maybe about 20 seconds, and one teaspoon of sugar. So let's go ahead and stir that, whip that up, try to get that going. That sugar helps that to uh, proof, which proof means it just gets fluffy, really. And now we'll get a large bowl, and I'll bring my mixer over. Okay. And I just have my kitchen aid, and here's my large bowl. And we'll start with, uh, let me bring my ingredients over. I have one stick of butter, and I did, they just say to, let it soften, but I um, I do pop it in the microwave for about 30 seconds. So it's one stick or a half a cup of butter. We'll start with that. And then we have two thirds cups of sugar. And I went ahead and measured that out. one teaspoon of salt, and then you grate for um, one tablespoon of lemon rind. So you actually buy a lemon, rinse it off, dry it off, and then you take the uh, side of the cheese grater and you just grate it. Um, it really brings delicious flavor to cakes or even breads, as you see today. And there is an option in that recipe book for um, three quarter teaspoon of aniseed, but I don't like it, so I don't use it. So let's go ahead and put this on here. And we're gonna stir that. While we stir that, let's add our um, three quarter cup of scalded milk. So I just have our milk. I'm going to turn it on. Whoops, long, long pot. And we just bring it to a little boil. We just uh, bring it to like a steaming or a little black bubbles. And once we get that going, we can add the scalded milk to our mixture here. So let's just let that go for a minute. Um, let's see, stir. Just let that go and I'll be back in a minute while we scald that milk. So it didn't take long for our milk to go ahead and steam up and scald. So we're gonna just, well, let's turn this off for a moment. Like that, lock that. We're just gonna pour that right in while it's hot. And we'll add that right to our mixture there and we'll go ahead and stir that and let that cool down some before we move to our next ingredients so we'll be back in, a, in about three minutes four minutes while it cools down okay we let that cool down um, it's it's still warm but uh, not too warm and we gave our yeast a moment to proof do you see how that's nice and fluffy now so it says to add our small bowl, which is our yeast bowl, into our mixer. And I did go ahead and change my um, tool here and put my beading mixer on right here. Uh, just so that way, for this bit, I think we need to blend it well. So I want to really, it says to beat it, so let's, let's beat it instead of just stir it. All right, I'd like to make sure we got it all because that's what we're going to use to get our dough going. Move that off to the side. Um, so it says to add our yeast mixture and beat that. So let's beat that in there. And we are also going to add our eggs, which are four eggs beaten. So if that 
mixture was too hot, our eggs would have cooked in there, and that would be a mess. So we don't want that to happen. And we're going to add two cups of flour. We're going to let that beat for on medium for about two minutes. Okay, and we're back. We went ahead and let that um, stir for about two minutes on medium. And now it says to hand stir in two and a half cups of flour. Um, but instead of hand stirring, we do on this mixer have a stir. It's just the very first um, spot. So we... I'm going to go ahead and let that stir um, for a bit. Now here you can add three quarter cups of currants if you'd like to. I don't, um, but that's an option to add during while we make our bread. Okay, that's pretty mixed. And now it's really sticky. And we're going to have to knead this dough. So we've got to get this stuff off of here first. which my fingers are clean and I'll just be having my hands in that dough in a minute anyway. Let's try to get that off. Great. It is sticky. Okay, move that off to the side and we're gonna move our mixer out of the way. And now I'm gonna teach you how to knead bread. So if you have, if we haven't done that already together, let me wipe off my surface though. You want a nice clean surface to start. And you want nice clean hands. So in case you're not sure your hands are clean, give them a little wash. And then we're going to flour our work surface so I'm going to just add some flour and I'm going to just flour around here. I'm going to end up with a little flour on me as well. It does say uh, we do have some flour to mix in here which is a cup and a half but I always do flour my work surface too. So let's just get this dough out of here. grandmother would get up every day and make bread for her family and for the neighbors too she had a little bakery well probably not too little probably a pretty big bakery it is said during world war ii that they kept the village alive between my grandfather with the butch butcher shop and my grandmother with the bakery okay so we're going to go ahead and add a little flour, and we're going to just start folding. Oh, it's sticky. So we're going to need quite a bit of flour. We don't want it to stick to our surface, so it feels so soft already. So we're just flipping it over, pressing down with our heel, flipping it over, pressing down with the heel of our hands. Uh, as it, if it gets too soft and starts to stick, we just want to add more flour. And we'll be kneading this for about 10 minutes, so um, you can go ahead and knead this. Feels wonderful already. As the flour gets incorporated into the dough, it becomes a little more, uh, less white from the flour. So you just want to add more flour as you go so it doesn't start to stick. Hi, I'm back. And I kneaded the dough for about 10 minutes. And you can see it's nice and smooth and satiny feel to it. And now it's time to let that dough rise. So it says to place it in a bowl, but I always use this pot for all my doughs. So I'm just going to put a little olive oil at the bottom of that pot and then we put the dough in there and roll it around so the top and the bottom and the sides are all have a little 
olive oil on it. And now we're just going to put the lid on it and find a nice warm spot. Maybe you have a sunny spot in your house or if you want to put the fireplace on and put it next to the fireplace. We're going to let that uh, dough rise for about an hour and a half and then we'll be back. Meanwhile, if you want to, you can go ahead and dye your eggs. You can use any dye you want. I went ahead and uh, started my day by dyeing some eggs. So you will need some dyed eggs for this uh, Easter bread. Okay, so we'll be back in a little bit. Hi, and we're back and we went ahead and let that dough rise for about two hours, maybe even a little longer. And now we're ready to roll it out. So we're gonna take a little flour and sprinkle it on our work surface. And I'm going to cut this dough in half because I don't think I'll need the whole thing for the, the piece that I'm making. I'm going to make a basket. So actually we'll make it and we'll cut this into thirds. So we should be able to get um, two breads out of the pile that I made there. So that's about a, a third each. So I'm going to make a basket, but when I have um, my family here, you can make anything you want out of this bread. Uh, you can make baskets, you can make a cross, you can make um, uh, doves, you can make, I've seen uh, rabbits, anything you want, any shape you want to do, you can do out of these uh, breads. And then you'll put your egg wherever you want to in it. So what I'm going to do is make the traditional braided um, basket and put the egg in there. So I'll go ahead and continue just to roll this out and stretch it as I go. Uh, it might take me a little bit. So um, how about if I come back after I work this bread a little bit, see how I'm just rolling it, trying to make it uh, kind of even and a little longer than that. Hi, and we're back, and I made three pieces the same length and the same width, pretty much. And I found that not putting flour down worked better, so I um, just rolled it on, you know, just a very light dusting of flour, if anything at all. So we're going to start by, uh, let's join the three uh, pieces together on one end, and we can stretch it as we go, and then we're going to braid it, so we're going to take one side and then the other side and just flip it make it a nice tight braid make sure your ends are together we're just going to go ahead and braid the whole bread crisscrossing just like you would braid a piece of hair as we go and you can see how this could let's see I went here this one how you could make other things out of it right I like to pay attention to what I'm doing so I'm braiding it right this will be easier like this. Maybe just pulling it as we go. And then we're just going to smash it together at the end. So to make the basket, you just bring it around and bring those pieces together. That'll be the bottom of our basket. And we can take a small piece and even make a little little nest for it. Kind of set that in there. Now I'm going to pick a pretty egg. I think I'm going to go with a blue egg. Nice and dry. Set that right inside. And now to hold that egg in place, I usually, you know, I'm not the best person in the world to do this, but I'm going to show you how I do it. Sometimes it catches, sometimes it lets go while it bakes. 
but it's, you know, it's fun to do with the family. It's delicious. Might not be the prettiest. I'm sure there's craftier people out there. Okay. I'm just trying to pinch that basket closed. A lot of times my basket opens up when I go to put it in the oven. And now, uh, sometimes we brush it with uh, egg whites. But this time we're going to try butter. So that's what the recipe actually calls for. So I'm going to brush it with some butter. Melted butter from the microwave. Try to keep those pieces together. And then I am going to use my favorite is sesame seeds. I'm going to sprinkle it with sesame seeds, but you can sprinkle it with um, some of those candies as long as they're not the kind that melt in the oven. I think they call them corals. Okay, so usually we have two people give us a hand when we put it on in the oven, so we pick it up with a couple of these. And you can change the shape a little bit. So if you wanted it to be a little rounder basket or a little longer basket, depending on the shape, I'm going to go with a little rounder. And again, I'm going to just pinch those sides. And then I'm going to put it in the oven at bake 325 for about, oh, let's see, maybe 50 minutes. But we'll take a look at it. Um, and I'll be back. I'll show you what it looks like when it's finished. Hi, and we're back and I pulled our breads out of the oven. As you can see, I decided to make um, what I made with you, the basket, and I did make a cross. It is, uh, the egg is starting to pop out of the shell, but that's okay. Um, I would recommend using egg whites instead of the butter to uh, brush on the breads because it does make it shiny and a little prettier. So I would probably do that next time. And I hope you liked our um, program today. If you did, you can like our page and leave a comment. I hope you get a chance to make your own Easter bread with your family. Um, if you're looking for other videos, you can find them on our YouTube page. And um, thanks so much. Have a great day. Take care.